Good morning and welcome to worship at Lamington Presbyterian Church. We are delighted that you have chosen to be with us this morning. We welcome both of those of you who are in person with us as well as those of you who are worshiping with us online this morning, extending a special warm welcome to any visitors or first-time worshipers with us today. I do want to welcome Officer Smith to our worship service this morning. I do want to note um, that we have had a few um, interesting visitors the past couple of weeks that have perhaps potentially sought to disrupt our order of worship. And so the session decided that to prevent any um, distraction in worship, that it would be best for us to have an off-duty police officer with us this Sunday, probably the next Sunday or two, just to make sure that we are able to focus our worship on the triune God and maintain the peace here in this holiest of places. So do not be alarmed. We wanted him to be here today. And actually, side note, he was raised Presbyterian, which I think was a bit providential for us this morning. Um, just to reiterate our COVID procedures, um, we are going to be so tempted to sing today because we have Bess back, one of our soloists. We are grateful for Bess's leadership this morning. Bess will be singing our hymns. Um, those of you who just can't hold it back, please make sure you wear a mask. We are still not encouraging group singing. Um, it is um, still con considered a, a super spreader kind of action. And so we are not encouraging congregational singing, but if you have to mouth the words and you have a mask with you, that's great. If you need a mask, they are in the back. Um, if anyone, um, we're, if we're lip syncing, we're going to, we're going to call you out on it. I want to thank all of our volunteers this morning for being here and helping create um, a wonderful worship environment for us. If you would like to volunteer to help, there are signups in on the table right here on the way to the Gladys Room if you want to join us for coffee hour this morning. Otherwise, you can sign up by contacting the church office. We will have the paper posted um, on the hallway outside of the church office if you happen to drop by during the week. Um, I wanted to let you know we are hosting our home family, Berta and her boys, starting next Sunday, the 26th. They are still in a hotel due to COVID, um, and we are lucky to have some financial resources already donated for that purpose for the hotel room, but we do need two more um families to offer to help cook or bring food to them Friday and Saturday, October 1st and 2nd. Um, so there's more about that in the church newsletter, or you can contact Meredith Scott if you have any questions about food delivery to home. And lastly, the um, we are grateful to be able to celebrate the life of Kenneth Vleet, who died in July. He was the master creator of the cross that hangs above me. And um, there will be a memorial service for Kenneth Vleet on this Saturday. Um, that is the 25th of September at 11 o'clock in the morning. If you knew Kenneth or his wife, Annette, um, I'm sure they would appreciate your presence here in support of his life and our time together. And you will note in the bulletin, please save the date for November 13th. Um, we are so excited to have Min Kwan present her America Beautiful concert at 5 o'clock that evening. And then we will have a reception afterward. So you can read about that in the bulletin. And we will have an announcement about that next week as well. At this point, I invite you to stand as you are able. And together, let us call ourselves to worship responsively. When the world around us seems to be shaking, God's love is our foothold, which shall not be moved. When the life within us is dry and parched, God's word is our wellspring, our fount of living water. Let us worship the one who offers us wisdom and teaches us how to serve.
forgot to mention handbells. Uh, we are so grateful for Bess's voice here today to be our voice, but also Bess is le leading the handbell choir again. And so if anybody's interested, please speak with her after or let Jim or me know, and you can join us for rehearsal next Sunday morning. Friends, Jesus said, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Therefore, let us humble ourselves before God and confess our sin, both as individuals and as a community, as we pray together the prayer of confession. Holy God, although we honor you with our words and worship, our hearts are often far from you. We are easily distracted, seduced by the voices of the world, and quick to live for ourselves rather than for others. Forgive us, God. Help us amend our ways and embody your love and wisdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We continue in a time of silent and personal confession. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all our sin, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And as the forgiven and freed children of God, let us practice the act of reconciliation and love as we joyfully pass the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. Please listen to the prayer for illumination. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. May we approach your word today, holy God, with the reverence and respect it deserves. Let us be intentional in our listening and focused in our minds as we hear your word read and proclaimed today. Amen. The lesson today is from the Psalms 118, chapters one through nine. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put the confidence in mortals. It is better to take reference, refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. The word of the Lord.
Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Proverbs, which can be found in the Old Testament section of your pew Bibles on page 585, if you would like to read along. Listen now for God's word to you this day. Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 12. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. My child, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be wary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves the one he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Last Sunday, our member Thomas Larson gave an update on his Eagle Scout project. We are grateful that Thomas chose our church as the beneficiary for his many hours of service. He updated the landscape design and raised funds to give our memorial garden a beautiful renovation. After years of serving as a scout, he will soon be honored with the highest achievement award. Historically, the Boy Scouts of America, founded in 1910, have worked to improve society by being prepared and honoring God and country. In 1912, the Girl Scouts organization was founded to do the same. Although teaching girls substantial skills such as hiking and camping were very atypical a hundred years ago. The earliest Girl Scout handbook included instructions on how to stop a runaway horse and how to tie up a burglar with only eight inches of cord. The organizational details and activity have evolved over time, but the mission remains the same, to inspire young ladies to grow up just like the boys do, to serve God and country, and to help people at all times. The more I learn about scouts, the more I realize we still value organizations of substance in our society. I may have peaked as an elementary school brownie myself, but even the brownies are named for good elves instead of mischievous ones who do good deeds anonymously. These programs promote a sense of sacrifice for community, and they teach our young people how to give back and participate in something greater than themselves. At our best, local church communities do that too. Involvement in the church is a lifelong endeavor of learning how to serve God and country. The greatest commandment to love God and neighbor is a call to help and serve. But sometimes the message gets diluted by various issues of our day. When we get distracted from that simple goal of love, we begin to look inward rather than outward. We ask questions like, what's in it for me? rather than what can I do for them? So the church community meets regularly, dare I say religiously, gathers to seek inspiration from above and read scripture and wait for the Holy Spirit to work through us. It's only God's movement within us that enables us to care for others, even when we are overly concerned with ourselves. As we hear in Proverbs, it is not our own insight or understanding, rather that of our triune God through the word that guides us how to live. Proverbs is a book of wisdom literature in the Old Testament. It's said to be written by King Solomon to his son. In today's lesson, we hear a few godly recommendations that are promised to result in named blessings. This is much like the practice of positive reinforcement. You know how in school young students get really excited if their good behavior adds up to trinkets in a little bell jar and results in a prize for the class. If we do this, then we get that. Even better when we have to work together for it. It's not unlike Proverbs, really. Let me summarize what we just heard in the lesson. Keep the commandments, and you'll live a good, long life. Be faithful, and not only God, but people will like you. Trust in God, and be guided in the right direction. Glorify God with your possessions, and your cup will overflow. This ancient writing is more timeless than the scout's motto. It's meant to be instructive, but also incorporated into our way of life, such that we don't tend to fall victim to an insular way of living. When we brood on the text, we hear an invitation to join in God's mission together. We may not think we have what it takes, but we all have something to give. Verse 9 suggests it's honorable to offer our 
substance. The Hebrew word can also translate to possessions or wealth. It goes on to reference the Israelite practice of tithing, offering one-tenth of the first fruits of the harvest in God's name. Giving the first fruits is a big sacrifice. It's an exercise of faith. It teaches us that when we come together as God's people with our gifts, it will result in something more beautiful than we could do individually on our own. This kind of discipline is an investment in God's ministry. It is a way to offer back what the world values, a step toward entrusting treasure to God. Our substance, our tangible things, as well as our time and energy can be used to bless other people with a little intentionality. Our substance can be behind our words and our actions. We can think about this in all that we do. Proverbs says that generosity can return blessing, which means we can give and give and give of ourselves, and miraculously the well won't run dry. When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well about living water, he didn't advise her to bring a bigger bucket for herself. Because it's not about the quantity when it comes to God. It's about recognizing and celebrating an abundant life together. Shelby Hudgens was a man of moral substance. When an awful snowstorm hit the Colorado Springs area where he resided, he spent two hours pushing out strangers' cars that had gotten stuck in the snow. He had fallen on hard times himself, becoming impoverished and homeless, but he had muscles and time to give to help other people get on their way. A witness to his good acts learned of Hudgens' woes, and so he set up a GoFundMe account to help him find a place to live. Donors ended up contributing more than $22,000 to the effort. One person wrote, the world needs more people like this young man. A third grade teacher in Massachusetts won a $150,000 cash prize in a contest from Capital One. Miss Bowlerman had entered Capital One's Wish for Others promotion, her wish being that each of her students would leave for their December break with a book in hand. She wrote in her entry, their love and their love for reading and life is contagious. So Capital One delivered three books to each of Bowlerman's students and also gave her the entire $150,000 check. But rather than keep the money, Miss Bowlerman decided to donate it all back to the school. Generosity and good deeds can be as contagious as love for reading and life. I don't know if either of those people were practicing faith or just trying to do a good thing for someone else. It doesn't matter what our inspiration is or where it comes from if we are seeking to do our best to love our neighbors. Yet as children of God, who also seek to love the Lord in all that we do, when we reflect on our motives, we become very humble. We begin to see where God has moved in our lives, whether we were aware of it at the time or not. And we realize that our abundant God continues to offer us more than enough to share. When we look upward rather than inward, then we are directed outward. Proverbs says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce and then your barns will be filled with plenty. These wide adages remind us that we were not created to be independent individuals. 
as much as we promote self-sufficiency, we also celebrate that God gathers us together, asking us to contribute what we have so that he can multiply it. For when we compile our first fruit, we grow a harvest that makes a substantial impact at the holy food bank. When we honor God in a generous way, then we become a people of substance. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now with the confidence of Christians across the ages, I invite you to stand as you are able. And together, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And now I invite you to join your hearts and minds with me in prayer. Persistent and present God, we praise you for listening to us, for surrounding us with your presence, and for continuing to guide us daily. We pray that you would deliver us from doubts, that keep us from turning to you more often in prayer. Deliver us from catastrophizing thoughts, from assuming the worst, from failing to recognize the power you have given us to help and to heal. Deliver us from the shame of past failures that keep us from being vulnerable. Deliver us from cynicism that keeps us from embracing each day as a new opportunity, a precious gift, another chance to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. God of peace, there is so much anguish in the world. We pray for your abiding presence to be with those who are fleeing violence, tyranny, and the remnants of war. Accompany those seeking safety and shelter. In the midst of hurricanes, floods, and devastating wildfires, empower us to care for our earth and for one another. Give comfort and courage to those who are suffering more than they feel they can bear, that through us you might lift up and carry them as well. Finally, God, we pray for the sick and in need of healing, for friends, neighbors, and loved ones suffering from COVID-19 or other diseases for people who cannot get help in the hospital because they are overridden, for those in our community who are wrought with grief. Sit with those waiting for a diagnosis. Comfort those living in pain. Sustain those filled with worry. Restore those in need of hope. We pray this in all our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, giving thanks to you that he connects us to your eternal righteousness 
and teaches us when praying to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In Proverbs, it also says, A generous person will be enriched. Those who give freely will grow all the richer. Now is our time of offering, which has been different in the pandemic. We don't pass the plates yet again, but there is a plate in the back, or you can give online. We also invite you to use this time to think about all the gifts in your life and how they can be rededicated to God's mission as we meditate on the doxology. of music and voice this day. We thank you for the many gifts that we have to offer in your name. And we pray that you would bless these gifts for good use to your glory. May these tokens of our gratitude be of service in blessing the poor, feeding the hungry, clothing and sheltering those struggling to survive. Use these gifts to further Christ's mission and ministry in a hurting world, that all may one day know the glory of a life lived in faith to you alone. Amen.
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct your paths. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you and those whom you love wherever they are this day and always. Amen.